If I told you that this was a bone with a red marrow on the inside and nice dense cortical bone on the outside, a couple of you might believe me uh, if you have not been following my series, but you will soon see that that's a bunch of baloney. This is one of the world's most beautiful adrenal glands. Like the pituitary, the adrenal gland is really two glands derived from two completely different embryologic sources and having two completely different uh, functions. You have a very, very clear-cut cortex in here with a little capsule, and then you have the medulla, which is a whole different kind of cell, different color. Even grossly, a, an adrenal gland is a glory to hold in your hand because you could see a bright yellow ribbon, which is about a millimeter thick. And then in the middle, you see browner, redder, mushier substance. And you could never, ever, ever doubt when you accidentally cut into an adrenal gland while you're dissecting out your kidney because it just has that bright yellow ribbon. It's yellow because the cells, the substance inside the cells is uh, chiefly um, cholesterol and cholesterol pre uh, products, which are fat and therefore which are yellow. Let's take a closer look at the adrenal gland. Here's the fibrous capsule. Here's a little bit of the capsule dipping into the cortex. Here is the entire cortex here. That's only about a millimeter thick. And there's, there's a very, very good demarcation from this redder substance on the inside, which is the adrenal medulla. And as you know, the adrenal medulla is basically a sympathetic ganglion with ganglion-like cells uh, pouring out epinephrine and norepinephrine. And whereas the adrenal gland is pouring out all kinds of hormones, all of which are uh, steroid-based, and depending on what part of the uh, cortex you're at, you can know what generally what kind of steroid it is. Here's the entire cortex. These little clusters of small cells, looks, which look like small glomeruli, which is the most superficial layer next to the capsule. This is the uh, zona glomerulosa. These fascicles or linear streaks of cords extending through the majority of the cortex is the zona fasciculata. The deepest portion of the cortex, which no longer looks like glomeruli and no longer looks like streaks of cords, is more of a general mesh or reticulated pattern. So we can call this the uh, zona uh, reticularis. And these are the three classical layers of the adrenal gland. And the reason why it's really nice to think in terms of threes with the adrenal cortex is the zona glomerulosa pours out the steroid hormones which are related to uh, uh, sodium and potassium uh, regulation. In other words, the um, aldosterone-like compounds uh, called mineralocorticoids. The zona fasciculata pours out the glucocorticoids, the chief hormone being cortisol. And the zona reticularis pours out the steroid hormones, which are related to uh, androgen and even some estrogen-like effects. So let's make this real simple. simple. Glomerulosa fasciculata reticularis, salt, sugar, and sex. And I hope you remember that forever because I was 59 years old before I could really put that together as nicely as I did now. Here's some fibroblast in the capsule. Here's the entire uh, uh, cortex. And remember, uh, microscopically, the cells of all the three layers look similarly alike. They have this foamy cytoplasm filled with uh, cholesterol-like compounds and hormones, uh, cholesterol-like uh, hormones. That's why they look yellow. Otherwise, they look like endocrine cells. There is a considerable variation. They're round nuclei. They have abundant cytoplasm. There's considerable variation inside. They're very, very richly vascular. And whether you are looking at these glomeruloid-like clusters from the glomerulosa or the fasciculata or all the way here into the reticularis, uh, the cells look the same. 
so much for the cortex. The medulla is very, very, very vascular. It's probably considered to be more of a sympathetic ganglion than the endocrine gland, but it is an endocrine gland because these cells of the uh, adrenal medulla make the uh, flight or fight, flight or fight hormones of your body, uh, epinephrine and uh, norepinephrine. Uh, and basically, these are the cells that do it. Uh, you may occasionally see kind of a larger ganglion looking cells because really the majority of the cells in the adrenal uh, medulla are ganglion cells. They are taking uh, sympathetic uh, preganglionic fibers uh, and uh, innervating these cells and then as a result you know, pouring out the epinephrine and norepinephrine, sometimes in large amounts, um, the adrenaline being the epinephrine and the noradrenaline being the uh, norepinephrine. Some of the cells here may look a little neural or spindly because they are really, this is really a modified uh, ganglion, isn't it? What more can we say? Perhaps one more thing we could say about the uh, medulla is that you will often see very, very large veins inside the medulla, like you see here and like you see here. And these are called central veins. And these are uh, very classically found in the middle of medulla to have large, large veins. And uh, I don't really think I want to say more about the adrenal medulla, except what I would say in general about the adrenal gland is in our shotgun philosophy, I don't think there's anything on this entire slide now that you couldn't identify from any power whatsoever. And therefore, I thank you very much.